Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm in someone else's shop. Roy from Vintage Axe Works invited me up uh, to see his place and he's gonna tell all that he knows to me about uh, different kinds of axe heads and what to look for. I brought a couple hatchets and axes just to see if they're worth anything or if he could tell us some things about how to spot um, whether you have a good axe or a good hatchet. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm excited to kind of learn some of this because I don't know anything about it, but uh, let's do it. As I just mentioned, that's Roy that you saw in the background there, and he owns Vintage Axe Works. He restores some beautiful axes and hatchets, and this is part of a video series I'm doing with him. Roy's shop is a mecca for old axe heads, rusty tools, and it just screams quintessential American workshop. If you didn't catch my last video, Roy showed me all about how to sharpen an axe. Be sure to check out that video, and I'll leave links to where you can find Roy down in the description. Roy, thanks for having me up. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to pick your brain on what to look for in an axe. You know, some of these family axes and hatchets I've had for a while, I don't know if they're good, if right. they're not good, you know, good quality. Just tell us some of the things, some of the characteristics that you would look for if you were out just picking. So the first thing that I would look for uh, is an easy indicator of something's good it would just be any sort of stamp on there whatsoever. And this one here is a genuine plum. So there are a couple major manufacturers, Plum, Collins, Kelly, Mann, that sort of stuff. So any, anytime that there's a stamp on there, it's probably going to be a good axe. Now these in particular, these are called half hatchets, roofing hatchets, that sort of thing. And they these things come in a blazillion different combinations. This one here has a little scallop in it. This one here has a little nail puller in it. Um, that came with different heads. So this one here is faceted. This one is rounded. This has a waffle face on it. This one is smooth. Some of them came flat all the way across with an octagonal head on there. So lots of different combinations. But baseline, if it's got a stamp, it's probably going to be a pretty good axe. Okay. These were some, I don't know where down the line from my family, but those have been in my family for years and years and years, kind of just handed down. Yeah, and, and that's pretty typical. Um, and a lot of people, whenever they're cleaning out a barn or a garage or something of a family, um, one of the last things that's in the corner covered in dust and crap is going to be an axe just laying mm -hmm. because typically most people, older people, had axes lying around split some kindling for a fireplace, split up some wood, whatever. It's just kind of a normal household tool. Cool. All right, so we've got some other ones here. Uh, tell us some about those. So this one on the surface looks pretty good, pretty cool. Um, it's got a nice sheath on there. And if you look a little closer, this is actually a Boy Scout sheath, but do not um, let it fool you because these sheaths can really go on just about any axe head and this axe it's got this really shiny steel underneath all this rust it's painted green and it has this epoxy fill that's similar to what Plum did back in the day they called it permabond this is called china bond or something <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but all but those are indicators these are all indicators of this is made fairly recent although it looks old and beat up i would say this is probably from the 80s and this is definitely a chinese head and one way that we can kind of verify that is you have another axe that's really really similar kind of the same paint scheme on the surface this kind of looks like a kelly wood slasher because of the red paint but if it didn't have the labels which the labels this does say china right there mm -hmm. but same paint scheme same shiny steel and the same fill same fill right there heavily lacquered handle on both of those another big indicator 
Not to mention that it is stamped China right there also. Hmm. Okay. So, so that's some things to look for that, you know, if you're out trying to buy something cool at an antique show or whatever, those are indicators. And this one here, this one's kind of cool. Whenever I saw it, I got excited at first. And then after doing a little investigation, kind of found some different stuff about it. So first off, this shape right here, not real normal. Uh, typically this would round down um, and depending on this shape it's really going to dictate what pattern it was could have been a Michigan or it could have been a Western pattern um, but this has been modified very heavily so this is not normal this could be an old head um, and there might be a stamp under there somewhere there is a little stamp right there Let's see if I can get it it's a three So that might be something good under there and it's a pretty small size so I immediately thought this might have been a cruiser and cruisers are small double bits and the way to really really tell uh, is just to measure the eye size. Typically a double bit is two and a half to three inches on the eye size but a cruiser is going to be two and a quarter or maybe even a little bit smaller. So we put a tape on it, it's bigger. Um, so it should be a full size. This should be full size, three pound, maybe three and a half pound. I don't, maybe there's a little bit more hidden under there, but it's been heavily modified and heavily ground down. So it looks small, but it's actually a full size head. Hmm. So this, out of all of them, is probably the best axe here. That one came from my grandpa, which might've come from his dad. Uh, on the Ulrich side. So it's been around a long time. You can see it's been struck here on the back, yep. you know, with something quite a few times. Um, but they really use their tools. Like my grand, my, my great grandfather and his father were carpenters. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of this kind of thing. In fact, some of those hatchets might have come from them. Sure. Um, but tell me about that one. So this one, definitely a replacement handle this this is a newer type handle it's really big and kind of blocky you can also see that it's not hung properly there's a big gap right there um, but we've got the red paint which is painted right here so um, whenever I first saw those at a, at a glance I, I immediately thought that that was a Kelly wood slasher well um, and then you told us about the shiny metal so this one is not as shiny not nearly as shiny the red paint is really faded, it's really dull, um, but here's the key giveaway. If you see these ridges right there in the eye, this is really indicative of a Kelly Wood Slasher. And this is probably from the 50s, 60s, or 70s. Um, they had a couple of different combinations of ridges, hmm. so sometimes you'll have two by two, or you'll have a two by three combination there. Is that just something from the manufacturing process in their plant? It was, and they they called it uh, the headlock design. There's actually a, a sign right there that was made by Bluegrass. And Bluegrass axes were primarily made by Kelly. And if you see it, it says ridges forge inside the head grips the handle tighter. Yeah, I was wondering if there was some kind of mechanical advantage to that. Um, according to them, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not really. I mean... The wedge it, does a lot more the, than the, the ridges. Does a lot more. Um, the, it does help, absolutely. It makes it a pain to hang, um, especially if you're just getting started. I would not recommend trying a Kelly Wood Slasher as one of your first or second axes to hang because it, it is very difficult. You have to remove a lot more material and, and people typically think that once they're sliding the head on, they get into these grooves that they cut in that they have to stay in those grooves and it's not really the case. Um, I would just remove more material. Mm -hmm. um, all that being said, they're not very easy to hang. Hmm. So steer away from these as a beginner. As a beginner. Um, but whenever they do get hung properly, they do. It's a good axe, it's a good good head. They are, they're very good. And this would have come with a foilized label that said Kelly Wood Slasher on it. It was a red and shiny silver foil label. And 
once you use that axe a handful of times it just comes gone. right off yeah so well that's awesome yeah so this is by far the best axe of the bunch hang on to this one cool Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that gave you some tips of what to look for in an ax or a hatchet. I found it interesting. Uh, let me know below if you learned something or if you have other tips, I always like to learn different things. So big thanks to Roy uh, for having me up here to his shop and showing me all that stuff. I'll leave links to uh, some of where you can find him on Instagram uh, down below or if you wanna check out one of the beautiful axes that he makes and sells, um, definitely do that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.